To get started modeling in Mint, I select one of the areas, in this case South Sudan, and at the top of the screen, there's a number of steps that I can follow. First, I can explore data that is available for this area. I can browse data sets, uh, look for high quality data sets and remote sensing data sets. Um, this is just to get familiar with the data sets that are available. And um, then I can choose some regions that uh, are defined. So for example, in South Sudan, we have the Pongo Basin and I can see how the area is uh, structured for agriculture. I can also see what are the hydrology areas that are defined. Um, so the river basins that are defined. I'm going to select Pongo and it's going to show me a number of uh, tasks that are ongoing by analysts uh, studying the Pongo area as well as models that are available for the Pongo. So I can see economic models, hydrology models, and so on and so forth. Um, this is just allowing me to browse and to see what's available to me. Uh, the next step is to prepare models. So I can browse the models that are available. This is very nice because I can see um, what the models are about. I can see their details. I can choose different versions, different configurations. I can see what they are about. I can see some Forrester diagrams that summarize the different processes and the different variables that the models use. Um, these are nice overviews to allow me to see how the model works. And this is an example of, of the results that one can get with this model. Uh, I can also see the files that the model uses, the parameters that can be adjusted in this particular configuration of the model. Uh, there's a lot of input data sets that are already fixed uh, so that it's appropriate for uh, the Pongo region. So I don't have to worry about setting up a lot of the details for this model for the Pongo. I can also see what variables are included in each of these um, input files, what elevations, um, what uh, variables show up, and so on and so forth. Um, also similar models or similar software. Um, so I can, I can just browse and see what the different models are about. This is useful to just get familiar with them. Uh, the most important part of Mint is to use the model to actually explore and analyze situations and scenarios. So um, uh, we start with problem statements. So here are some examples, forecasting to understand food security, um, backcasting, different dates, different ways to do it. Um, so one can add uh, problem statements. Um, they're just general topics of interest to study. I'm going to go into this one. And um, someone else has created a number of uh, tasks and a number of uh, different aspects of, of this forecasting. So um, what happens if there's a fertilizer subsidy for groundnuts? Uh, what happens um, if we want to look at the uh, crop production? So I'm going to go here um, uh, just to pick one and uh, show how it works. It's possible to edit or add new ones, um, but these are a flavor of all the tasks that are available. Um, so under any of these um, different uh, tasks, um, we start a modeling thread. So I can add other modeling threads. I just want to walk through this one that has already been defined. So what characterizes a modeling thread is um, a particular aspect of this task. So here, to look at the model yield for maize and uh, sorghum, I might do a modeling thread for one model. I can do another thread for another model. I can do different threads for different initial assumptions. Um, it's my choice to organize my modeling in whichever way I prefer. Each modeling thread starts with a selection of variables. So first, we select indicators and adjustable variables. Um, indicators are an index, 
uh, which combines several variables into a single value or a single variable of interest that comes out of a model. And um, adjustable variables are basically the kinds of inputs uh, to drive those models. So uh, I can always uh, change these variables. In this case, we selected potential crop production. I can select others. And then adjustable variables means how do I want to drive this? Maybe I want to change the year where the planting starts or um, the fertilizer cost or something else. I'm just going to say that I'm interested in potential crop production. So I always click on select and continue um, and then move on to uh, the next step. Uh, here, it's going to show me models that are appropriate for the indicators that I chose. So if I uh, click on this uh, icon, I can see all the models that are appropriate for potential crop production. So I see several versions of cycles. I'm going to pick a couple of them and compare them. So when I compare them, it's showing me the adjustable variables that I can adjust on each one of them. Uh, so they are slightly different because this version doesn't have any variables. Um, there's also an indication of all the processes that are being modeled. Um, the way that the model was uh, set up for Pongo is telling me that it was configured by hand by an expert. Uh, it's also telling me that they're configured for Pongo. It's a 0D model, so it's a point uh, model, it's a point-based grid. Uh, and so this is helpful for me to see the differences between the models. Um, I think that um, one of the things that I see is that here I can select a, a weather um, uh, input and here it has the weather input already uh, selected. So these comparisons are very useful. Uh, and after I select models, in this case, um, let me see, I selected uh, this particular uh, model where I can select weather data. So uh, the input data, uh, similarly, I just picked a model, so it's going to give me data sets that are appropriate um, to use. And so when I get the data sets, I can see um, this will take a second, but it will uh, give me data sets that are compatible and appropriate for this model. Um, taking a minute, uh, but it, it will show me. Sorry, my connection seems to be slow. I'm going to cancel this because we actually chose a particular data set. There's also FLDAS or GLDAS data sets available, and I can see um, what my options are. Um, assume that I pick this uh, cycles weather. Sometimes these data sets are so big that they're uh, split into different files or, or resources. The next step is to set up this model. So we selected this one model. We can uh, uh, then uh, look at the parameters that we can adjust. So, so this would be the name of crops that we want to try out. So uh, I pick three different crops. We can edit this and, and pick different values and uh, set them up. So we just set them up with different um, uh, uh, values uh, and it will uh, add those values to the simulations. So it's telling me an end planting day, a start planting day, uh, fertilizer rates, uh, that may be possible. So I want to try all of these different values just to explore um, different ways to set up the model. Um, I'm going to leave the values that I had before. Uh, once I have this set up, then I go to runs and it will go and run all the combinations of configurations that I have just specified. So here we have uh, 62 pages of different model runs and um, I can see that they're all um, uh, green. Um, I can see that um, they each produced a different um, output. Uh, I can explore these outputs. I can see what happened. Um, I can also move forward 
and see um, that each of these runs actually generated um, uh, these different outputs that I can uh, click on and download the raw data for my own analysis if I'm curious uh, in any way. Uh, so I can see here that it did uh, more than 6,000 model runs when I uh, set this up before. Um, so now I can move to visualizing these results and it's going to show me, I'm going to um, um, move out the left hand side uh, all of those questions so that I have more room. Um, but it's going to show me uh, for different years what are the uh, proportions of um, uh, grain yield, what, what is the grain yield for in different years uh, for different wheat fractions. And so um, I think uh, you can see that as we move forward, um, uh, this, this really changes. I can also see this for different um, crops. And so it will be different as we explore this. Okay. Once I've explored these visualizations, I see uh, the different, um, uh, you know, these are visualizations in three different locations of the model. Um, I can go to prepare reports and it will show me all of the reports that are available. Um, in this case, we can see uh, uh, this is the one that I just showed. So it's showing me all the decisions that I made, the variables that I picked, uh, the models that I picked, the setups that I picked, all the runs that I did, and then the same visualization um, where I can still include it in my final report. Um, so this is how one walks through the different capabilities and functions of Mint. Uh, like I said, the main um, option is this uh, uh, place where I can use models uh, to explore different um, questions and different threads and different uh, models. This is, for example, a thread uh, where I'm trying an economic model to look at uh, crop production. Um, the final thing uh, that I want to show is the messages. Messages uh, allow um, uh, analysts to uh, communicate with one another. Uh, so you can say, um, I would like to show you what I have been working on. And I can actually add um, a pointer, for example, to um, a particular page that we were looking at earlier. So um, if I like these visualizations, I can pick this URL at the top. I just copied it and then I'm going to paste it in my message. Um, so I'd like to show you what I've been working on. Check out how Maze behaves. Um, after uh, uh, 2017. And so I can post this and then other analysts can see that um, this is my user, which is Mint, and they can see that I've posted this message and respond and I can see their responses. Uh, and that is it. I hope you enjoyed this demo.